Okay, so now we're going to talk about breathing. And we'll cover respiratory failure and ventilator management in this thing. But first, we're going to take a detour. We're going to understand how breathing works. So let's look at the lungs. So this is a, a, just a, pro, a, a lung unit here where these are alveoli and these are blood vessels. These are also alveoli, but these are ones that are not open. They're maybe atelectatic and so they are closed and so air comes in here gets into the blood well, CO2 comes out and comes out like that and so here's a normal flow right CO2 comes in oxygen goes out so CO2 I'm sorry goes into the alveoli and then is exhaled out oxygen is breathed in and comes through and out into the blood and in these alveoli here uh, there is no ventilation happening here, so meaning oxygen is not getting in here and CO2 is not getting out. So what happens to the blood is the CO2 comes here. It can't get out there because it, it's not ventilating. It just goes out that way. So in this alveola over here, we're getting no ventilation. But we have pretty good perfusion. And so we, ha we talk about the VQ. For some reason, the the uh, abbreviation for perfusion is a Q. So here we have low ventilation and very good perfusion. So this ratio, the VQ uh, ratio here, is going to be low. Let's contrast that with another situation. Let's say that there is a blood clot in this artery right here. So you can't really get any blood flow through there. But we're able to get very good ventilation. So we're able to get oxygen into here very well. So this would be a state where we have great ventilation but pretty crappy perfusion. So again, looking at this ratio, ver uh, ventilation is good, perfusion is low, so this fraction would end up being high. Okay, so this is how things normally work. Blood comes in, air comes in. We have diffusion of oxygen over here. And so it's worth mentioning one more thing about this right here. So oxygen is breathed in and it collects here in the alveoli and so we have oxygen in here and then it diffuses into here so the difference between these two oxygen levels here this difference here between that in the alveolus and the artery is called the AA gradient okay now let's look at respiratory failure there's really two kinds and they are un unimaginatively called type 1 and type 2 Type 1 is also called hypoxic uh, or hypoxemic respiratory failure and type 2 hypercapnic. So type 1 respiratory failure occurs whenever any of the alveoli fill up with fluid. And this can happen whenever the lungs are injured or there's uh, some sort of uh, pulmonary edema so that the fluid can really be of several different kinds. That's, I like to think of it as water, pus, and blood. So you'll get water in there whenever you have any type of pulmonary edema, like CHF exacerbations. Pus is going to be pneumonia. And blood could be injuries or uh, pulmonary hemorrhage. And this is called hypoxemic because you can breathe air in, so the oxygen gets in here. But then once it gets here, it can't get through all of this fluid and get into the bloodstream here. And so you're going to have the blood be hypoxemic. And so that's why it's called hypoxemic respiratory failure. Now type 2 respiratory failure is what, what happens when you just can't even get air into the lungs because something is just blocking it. So there's some sort of obstruction here. So whereas type 1 might be due to injury, type 2 could be due to obstruction. So what's going to prevent air from getting in here? Well, you could have something like an asthma attack. With asthma, you get constriction of the bronchioles, and you also get all this mucus that collects in there. And so it becomes really hard to get air through there. If you were able to get the air into here, no problem, because then these alveoli are fine. You, they'd be able to get the CO2 off and the oxygen into the blood. But the problem is you can't get it in there. Another possible cause could be anything that depresses the respiratory drive. So there's just not a lot of air getting in there. So maybe some sort of drug overdose. 
or it could be something wrong with the respiratory mechanics like a, a chest injury or even some neurologic problem maybe like Guillain-Barre so what's happening here really is that you're not able to get air in to the lungs with type 2 respiratory failure whatever breaths that do get in well that oxygen is going to get in here but you're breathing so poorly that you're not ventilating well that the CO2 is going to collect and so that's why you get hypercapnic so before we end this video I'm going to ask you a question tell me what the AA gradient would be in both of these kinds of respiratory failure would it be normal, low, or high? Alright, we'll see you in the next video.